Recording from a remote cabin in the high desert, I thank you for being here, and welcome. The truth is my videos are a creative outlet. Last week I went through hell, and it might seem crazy that I even squeaked a video in there. But it's just my escape, my art, creation, takes us away from the self, and the struggles that come with the self. And I think the key to happiness is most definitely being selfless, caring for others. And there is where happiness is found, on accident. It can't be forced, or stolen. And this week I'm just completely burnt out. If I could have ever skipped a week, it would be this week. But as always, my philosophy is, give what you can give. Do what you can do. Start where you left off. And I have a new internet, a hotspot, called the Nighthawk, sitting behind me. And it seems to be working. And rather than push my computer to the limit like I usually do, I'm just gonna noodle around this week and see what can be done. First off, I want to try the Google Earth out. Let's go to California City and see if she lets us. So far, so good. I think where I'm gonna struggle is uploading my videos. Download seems to be pretty okay. I have also called the phone company and told them I would like internet stubbed at the road. I'll still have to run it back about 1500 feet, but that would be awesome. A friend of mine has assured me we can bounce the signal the short distance. So I'm very optimistic. So far so good. And here we are in California City. Let's take off all these labels so we can see it as it really is. And all the remaining circuitry, the circuit board, really, really interesting. Seeming like some kind of language to me also, like some letters. Very interesting how each one is a little different. And just as looking at a circuit board from above would not make any sense. If you just pulled the top of a machine off, knowing nothing about it. And that's how it is for us here. And the ants have come and set their dwellings on these lines. And I think such places are good opportunities for land. It makes for an easy development for the developers, where all the streets are laid out. And they can sell them off for cheap. Usually you just need to dig a well use solar power, and a septic system. I tried to dig a well, or hire someone to, and they told me the water was bad where I was at. And I guess when I started looking at these patterns long ago, years ago, I thought that maybe some kind of blast had just wiped everything out, leveling the surface and leaving this footprint behind. But today, here we see a giant track. Today, I'm wondering if this is just all mud flooded and all we're seeing is the slightest impression. If we were to dig down, much more would be revealed. And let us look at these pictures once again that Martin shared some time ago. And I think this is a great example this one, for example. So deep underground you have the actual pattern, and then it gets covered, and you're left with a strange, what we would be told is a geological formation. Lava and gases, and other such follies. And in a past video, I had shown monuments out here sticking up out of the mud. One was at the Ground Zero site, the one in Nevada. I hope I didn't trip up the agents. 
In Nevada, in the desert, where they supposedly tested the first bomb. But were they really testing bombs out here? Or just erasing history? Anything that remained? Here, another racetrack to the north. And one day, I would like to take this road that shoots northeast of California City. Looking very Peruvian, everything very Peruvian out here. Totally unnatural. And it takes you up and over the mountain. This part must be man-made. And then becomes straight as an arrow, cutting through the desert. And here we see another sight. The Nazca Desert of North America here. North of Las Vegas. Boom. What explanation can be given for this? Some psychotic developer came out here, laying all this out, and failed to sell a single home? No. But this is what we would be told. And perhaps our community could turn this into our city. But back to my point, is this all just flooded out? And perhaps there's metal? Perhaps these are all consisting of metal circuitry. Hence, why the vegetation doesn't grow. Nobody's going out and maintaining these. Another option would be to send LiDAR over such a site. And another option would be simply to dig. But how deep does all of this go? And here I'm watching a video about this quarry. It's a marble quarry in Greece. It was just something that YouTube suggested to me. And I have considered that a lot of the marble that we see can actually be cast. Or at least some kind of a faux marble. But this is legit right here. Just pure marble. A marble mountain. And my mouth was just hanging open for a while and I eventually had to walk away and I question the nature of mountains. We in this community have done more considering than most on the idea that mountains could be buildings, trees, and even beasts. Everything is on the table. And when I see something like this, what is the realm? This is the core. There is no more core than this. And you see everything is covered in vegetation, just as we were looking on the Google Earth. And here everything is covered with mud and mountains poking up just all over the place. Strange colors. And out here in Nevada, like some inferno has swept through here. Water and fire. They even call it Death Valley. Just pure death and destruction. And even my area, pure death. Entire red mountain regions where nothing more than a three inch shrub will grow. It makes no sense. There's enough water. But yet could you grow a tree on a sidewalk or a street? Yes, of course, if there was a crack in it or something. But otherwise, having a very difficult time. That's what we see here. No reason why this should be such a wasteland after millions and millions of BS years. So then I see a picture like this. What can we make of a mountain of marble? Of pure and solid marble. I know I always say this, but like in the Bible, in King Solomon's temple, walls of lapis lazuli. Is this lapis lazuli? And are these guys just scratching the surface here? Eventually they will penetrate this fortress, this crystalline structure, and probably in our lifetimes they will not penetrate it. Just moving so slowly, moving these Baalbek-sized blocks, 
really reminding me of Baalbek blocks. You see here, they're gonna take out this section, just like the chunk we see in Baalbek, with all the tourists standing on it. And this is our maximum ability. Giant block like this, then they chunk it up into smaller ones, as we can see down here, about the size of a truck. It's worthless if you can't move it on a truck. And to think, when we look at these structures in Lebanon, using blocks this size to construct their temple, some of the earliest history, we are told, it really boggles the mind. So I enjoyed this, just to see what it takes. Here again, this is a small piece. And how absolutely crude, they're just going to push it over. Cracks off at the bottom here. And did this already look like this? I can't imagine even getting this started. I feel as if perhaps a little section was poking out. Because they're really not getting far. I have watched quite a bit of this. And it doesn't move that quickly. A very slow process. Now two guys have to slinky this giant piece along this road. And then there we go. They're able to load one piece this size. And yet we see chunks all around. Way, way up the mountain. And remember, this is a quarry. We have seen many sites, such as this one. This is limestone mining. This was shared by IRS Media some time ago. And this is small in comparison, but yet very similar. This is the core of the realm. Here this guy is just steadily chopping away at it. But this here is next level. And I don't know. I can't say that I know, of course. And here's the final product. This is pretty much the maximum they can haul out of here. A block this size. After all that, chains on these tires, requiring at least 10 giant machines before arriving to this point where it can be moved. And it's all beat up. Now think about some of these monuments that we have all around the realm. In a past video, I showed you a monument that they had moved, I believe in North Carolina, and it took three cranes. And the monument was from the 1800s. Okay. And through this move, I found a little notepad. I have little notepads everywhere. They're full of notes. And here I see a little note, and one little part of it says Victoria Island Parliament. And that's something I've wanted to look into for a very long time. And I'm very excited we have history. So let's have a little look at it real quick. Here she is. The Parliament featuring ornate neo-baroque architecture. And they offer guided tours. Sorry, I think I'm too close to my microphone. Look how many domes we have here. Just unbelievable. Domes everywhere. I'd like to park the man right here. Here we go. Looks like they were having a little rally or some event on this particular day. And this thing is just splendid in every way. Just mind-blowing. Let's look around here. And this is a pretty glorious hotel. I believe this is one of the railroad hotels? I'm not sure. Here we can see it. It's one of the oldest hotels in British Columbia. And here again is our specimen. Specimen or specimen? Whatever. Look at this thing. What will they tell us about this building on an island? 
built in the late 1800s on an island. This may be one of the most beautiful parliamentary buildings I've ever seen. Unbelievable. There are no words. Just left with a feeling of awe and wonder. Look at this thing. Timeless. Okay, let's have a look at what they actually have to say. And here is the main entrance. As if this was not an afterthought. Why not make this one the main exit? What have they done? Just put a window up here and instead of the grand doorway that it must have been? Let's find out. So they tell us from 1860 to 1898, the legislature met in a two-story wooden building. They were known as the bird cages because of their shape, and they burned. Construction of a new parliament building was first authorized in 1893. The province was anxious to commemorate its growing economy and political status. So what did they do? They had an architectural competition. Mind you, for 40 years they met in a two-story wooden building. But now, now we need to hold a competition to build a new parliament building. Just ambitious, right off the get-go. They couldn't just build another two-story building or even a four. No, straight to the contest. And we know the contest is a theme that the controllers have used over and over again. It's almost a joke at this point. Why even waste your time with the contest? And the silly thing is all the buildings end up looking generally the same. Big dome bunch of other domes, giant archway, two doors on either side. In reality, maybe there's ten different styles that they use for capital buildings, parliamentary buildings, and such. Why even hold a contest? And what a stupid contest if everyone is bringing the same things forward. Nothing exotic. So everybody was building like this. And beginning in the 40s and 50s, everything would become cubes. What has been coined brutalist architecture. We must hold a contest so someone can bring forth another Greco-Roman or Neo-Baroque or neoclassical building to the table. If they had all these skilled artisans and architects, why even waste your time with a stupid contest? Especially back in a time when there's no phone or internet. You're writing letters. Why complicate things with a contest? Are you submitting your blueprints via Pony Express? Taking a month for your plans to arrive to Vancouver on this damn island? And honestly, this island is huge. I didn't expect it to be so large. And we can see the mainland of British Columbia surrounding it here. And talk about a difficult place to settle. Not even this island. Just way out here. Francis Rattenbury, a 25-year-old immigrant, entered the contest with the pseudonym ABC Architect. He progressed to the second round, signing his drawing for the Queen, and eventually won the competition. Absolutely stupid. 
You're going to trust a 25-year-old and his fake ABC architect company as the winner of this competition? And this 25-year-old designed this? I don't care what time period in history no 25-year-old designed something like this. Period. But let's just humor them a little more. Despite exceeding the original budget of half a million, the final amount was just about a million. They began operations officially in 1898. And you see how they're eliminating the construction part, which I told you in my past video was like the comic section to me. And I think they're realizing how ridiculous it is. Now they're just omitting any explanation. So that's it. 1893, they thought of the idea. They authorized it in this act of legislature. And in 1898, five or six years later, it's just done. Only goes a half a million over budget, complete with 500 foot long facades, a central dome, and two end pavilions. The richness of its white marble and use of domes, sculptural massing with rusticated surfaces of the then popular renaissance style and remember the marble that we were just looking at here on this island somehow they got all this marble out here someone was telling me in a comment in the last video i think that they lived in the bronx or somewhere in new york or somewhere in the east and in her old neighborhood chunks of concrete sidewalk were breaking off, revealing marble sidewalks underneath. And I have seen this. I have seen marble sidewalks in Salt Lake City. Even just sections of them in front of businesses. And again, just wrap your head around that after the video that we just watched and the transporting of this marble and considering most of this pure marble comes from faraway countries. Of course, this Rattenbury of 25 years of age garnished many more commissions, including the Legislative Library, the design of the Empress Hotel that I was just showing you, the Crystal Gardens Indoor Swimming Pool, the Vancouver Courthouse, now the Vancouver Art Gallery. Oh my god, look at this thing. Same 25-year-old on a kick. Look at this. Just kicking out buildings. Two years here, three years there. And that's it. That's history. Five years to construct this in the late 1800s on an island. What can I say? Nothing at all. Well, I think that went well. My first official full recording. I hope the sound was okay. And I thank you all for joining me. Do have a blessed day. I love you all. And God bless.